Hello everyone and welcome to the Supports and Accommodations webcast. For those of you who may not know the voice speaking to you right now, my name is Jennifer Paul. I'm the English Learner and Accessibility Assessment Consultant for the Michigan Department of Education. And the other voice that you'll hear during this presentation is my colleague, John Jaquitz. He is our Assessment Consultant for Students with Disabilities. The topics that we're going to cover today are related to a review of supports and accommodations. We want to make sure that everyone understands the framework in which supports and accommodations work and function. We will also be reviewing some of the most frequently used supports and accommodations for MSTEP science and social studies. Let's talk about the big ideas for the framework. There are a couple principles that we want to make sure you at the district level or at the school level are always employing when you're thinking about supports and accommodations for students. You need to make team-based decisions, even for students that are English learners. In most cases, students are not solely going to one teacher. They are going to be working with multiple teachers. And in those cases, you wanna make sure that you're touching base with all educators that are working with that student so that you can fully understand the needs that the student may have at the time of the assessment. Similarly, you'll want to make sure that you are making individual student decisions. Every student's needs are different and so because of that you can't make blanket statements about enabling or disabling certain supports and accommodations at the time of the assessment just because it's easier from a process standpoint to do that. And one of the most important things that you can remember is to provide supports to the student that they use in their regular instruction. What you don't want to have happen is have a student that begins the assessment and is using a support or accommodation that they have never before used in their life. This will create a situation where the student might be confused and it will add to additional stress that they may be already facing as they attempt to take their assessments. This is our supports and accommodations framework. We have a three-tiered approach to thinking about supports and accommodations for students. The first tier is what we call universal tools. This is a category of tools that are available to all students and the use of these tools is primarily student driven. So an example of this could be a highlighter. The second tier is what we call designated supports. These are supports and tools that are available to students who have a specific need, and the use is primarily educator-driven. What we mean by this is that an educator has decided that the student needs this support. They are using this support regularly also in the classroom. An example of this could be the oral translation of content into the student's native language. And the third tier is what we call accommodations. These are things that are available to students with disabilities or those who have 504 plans whose need for this accommodation is documented on the IEP or 504 plan. The intent of this is really to make sure that the students who need something as outlined in their IEP get it during the assessment. Anything that is titled as an accommodation in our resources is only going to be available for this group of students. And speaking of resources, there is one very, very important resource that we are going to be walking through today that we would strongly recommend you look at. This is what we call the Student Supports and Accommodations Table. This table is organized by test and content area each content area is then organized by the three categories that we just reviewed, universal tools, designated supports, and accommodations. <clears throat> this is going to show you what is allowable. And of course, if something is not listed that a student may be using frequently in the classroom, please send us an email at mde-oeaa at michigan.gov to inquire about the use of that particular support. When it comes to supports and accommodations, and IEPs, many questions often arise, such as, what gets recorded on the IEP? Do we need to list if it's a universal tool, designated support, or accommodation? 
Can I just leave Universal Tools and Designated Supports off the IEP since they are available to any student? The rule of thumb to use is, if the student needs the support or accommodation, regardless of the category it falls into, then that support should be listed on the IEP. The supports a student requires from the IEP, regardless of the category, should stem from a need that is outlined for the student in the present levels of academic achievement and functional performance. The support that is required to fill the need should be listed on the IEP, but it does not have to be delineated as a universal tool, designated support, or accommodation. As we think about what's available for students taking the 11th grade MSTEP Science and Social Studies test, one of the main things that you can keep in mind is that all universal tools, designated supports, and accommodations are the same for 11th grade. So let's take a look at the supports and accommodations table. Here is our first page of universal tools for MSEP Science and Social Studies. As you can see, the first thing listed is breaks that a student may be allowed. We also allow for administration of the assessment in an alternate education setting with appropriate supervision. And we also do allow for the assessment to be administered individually or in a small group if that's necessary, dependent upon the type of the support that the student is required to have. For example, a group of students may need one particular oral translation into a language other than English. In those cases, those students could be grouped into small groups. Continuing with the universal tools, we have a second page that will be showing you, of course, other more frequently used supports in this category, such as, as I already mentioned, the highlighter, the cross-off tool, sticky notes, mark for review, use of page flags and reading guides on test booklets, a line guide, use of scratch paper, collection and secure disposal is required of scratch paper, and a magnifier as well. As you'll see, there is a column called mode, which indicates whether or not the support type can be used via the paper pencil form or via the online text. If you notice, the magnifier is only listed as an online universal tool. This is because the magnifier is an embedded tool within the online delivery engine. Let's now take a look at our designated supports category. The first one listed in this category is administration of the assessment in an alternate education setting. So such as a situation where the student may be um, in a hospital or in a care facility, the student could be administered a paper pencil form of the assessment in those particular cases if need be. The students could also take the assessment in an interim alternative education setting, such as a juvenile facility. Students may also need noise buffers at times. Now let's discuss text-to-speech. Text-to-speech for MSTEP Science and Social Studies, as already mentioned, is going to function in the same way. This means that if you enable text-to-speech for a student, then they will have all of the questions and the answer options read aloud to them. There are no passages, per se, within the Science and Social Studies test, so there is only one text-to-speech option that can be selected for students taking MSTEP Science and Social Studies. What you need to know for text-to-speech is that you are enabling this because the student really needs it. And rest assured that any text that can be read aloud to the student will be read aloud to the student once this is enabled. If you have a scenario where you have a student for whom text-to-speech is not a good option, we do allow a read-aloud option. This is a case where a human reader will use what is called the MSTEP reader script to read aloud the test questions and answer options. This can be done individually or in small groups of no more than five students. If a student needs a human reader instead of the text-to-speech option, they must use the paper pencil form of the assessment. This is to ensure the use of the MSTEP reader script. As was already mentioned, students can have an oral translation of the assessment into whatever native language they speak. However, if students need this support, the students must take the paper pencil form of the assessment and the translator must read and translate from the MSTEP reader script. 
Continuing on with designated supports, we do have and produce an MSTEP English audio CD. This could be used instead of the reader script. This will allow for you to administer the assessment in small groups. And again, the MSTEP English audio CD reads aloud test questions and answer options to students. For students who may need a translation option, we also produce a MSTEP Spanish or MSTEP Arabic DVD. This shows students how to follow along in their booklet. The students will hear Spanish or Arabic. However, they will see on the screen the English test booklet. And as I mentioned, it will help the students follow along with where to place their answers. Students requiring that particular support will need to take the paper pencil test. Students can also use an auditory amplification device, any visual aids that they may need. We have an embedded masking option to help students focus more clearly on particular portions of a test question. Students may use a page turner or a non-skid surface. Two options that may help students better see what is visually happening on the screen may be the color choice option or the contrasting color option. These are different color selections for the background and the text. We do allow for the use of a non-electronic word-to-word bilingual dictionary. This is not an actual dictionary. It should not contain definitions. It should just be a word-to-word -word translation for students. If you have a student who needs a scribe, perhaps they've broken an arm. A scribe can be used for MSTEP Science and Social Studies. However, we do require that the person doing the scribing utilize and review the OEAA scribing protocol, which is available on the MSTEP webpage. Students may also use augmentative or alternative communi communication devices. And in the rare case where a student may need to test across testing days, a multiple day testing option could be available. This should be used in limited fashion. And as I mentioned, this would be rare cases where a student has a number of supports that they are using that requires such a significant amount of additional time that this is what may require their testing across multiple days. Let's look at our final category of accommodations. If you have students who need a Braille assessment, we do have that option available. We, in fact, make that option available in contracted and uncontracted forms. We offer an enlarged print version of the assessment, an abacus, a non-embedded calculator option. Although a calculator is not required on the assessment and certainly not needed to answer any of the questions, it could be an allowable tool in case students may want to have it. Students who may need American Sign Language or Signed Exact English can have the directions and the test content provided to them in those forms. If a student may need adapted paper, additional paper, lined, or gridded paper for recording their answers, this could be done, but please follow the administration guidelines in the test administration manuals for appropriately recording and sending back those students' answers in these cases. An alternative communication device could be used if students need it, and a student could use a word processor for constructed response items uh, if need be. There are some important differences in what is available for science and social studies as compared to MSTEP math and ELA. For any student who needs a designated support or read aloud option, they must take the paper pencil test and the human reader must use the reader script. For any student who needs the test translated into another language, they must take the paper pencil test and the translator must use the reader script as a guide from which to translate questions. Some additional differences. There is not a stacked Spanish option available. However, students could take the paper pencil test and use the Spanish DVD or Arabic DVD. Please keep in mind also, as I already mentioned, that text-to-speech is only a designated support. There is not a text-to-speech option that is an accommodation. How do I know what support or accommodation to use with a student? The best guidance is to start by examining what you are doing in the classroom. Key support questions about supports that a student needs during instruction are, 
Which students need extra time? Which students need additional audio stimulus when they are reading? If I read aloud for all students to meet the needs of a select number of students, are there others that do not actually need it? Which students are English learners and may benefit from a word-to-word -word bilingual glossary in the classroom? Which students may be able to show the most about what they know if classroom content is fully translated for them? Which students may need a scribe due to issues that prevent them from expressing their thoughts on paper or using a keyboard? There are some important things to remember about using the supports and accommodations table. While most available supports and accommodations are listed, it is not intended to be a quote-unquote shopping list. Universal tools, designated supports, and accommodations are not intended to overly advantage students. They are intended to level the playing field. This usually results from a level of student need that needs to be addressed. The key question to ask yourself when making such decisions is, what does a student need in order to access content and show what they know? How do I organize everything in advance of the test day? The following steps can help. Review your class list or ask your teachers to each review their own. Then make a list of which students need what supports keeping in mind any needs that may already be documented by an interventions team, Section 504 team, or IEP team. Ensure that universal tools, designated supports, and accommodations are available to students on the day of the test. This may mean that someone be the designated point person to coordinate communication and enter the information into eDirect. How do I enable supports for MSTEP and my access? Directions for turning on designated supports and accommodations can be found in each of the test administration manuals. Embedded features must be turned on in eDirect unless that feature is considered a universal tool for that test, such as text-to-speech for my access. It is very important to note that some features require enabling before printing test tickets, so it is best practice to enable all supports and accommodations before you print the test tickets. If you have questions about what is available or need help in determining which supports might be best for students, please send an email to Jen Paul or John Jaquith at mde-oeaa at michigan.gov.